we will discuss the multiple choice questions on the topic semiconductors in which we will discuss the direct and indirect band gap semiconductors and the applications of semiconductors like solar cell and hall effect so let us start with the first question in case of direct semiconductors what happens to the momentum of the electron during the transition from the valence band to the conduction band so let us see the options option a it decreases option b it remains constant option c it increases option d it becomes zero points to consider here are when a photon excites an electron in a direct band gap semiconductor the photon carries only energy and not the momentum according to the law of conservation of momentum the total momentum before and after the transition must be the same since the photon has no momentum the electron's momentum must remain constant for energy to be conserved this is a crucial difference from indirect band gap semiconductors where the conduction and valence band extrema have different k vectors in such cases an additional phonon that is a lattice vibration must participate in the transition to provide the missing momentum and that makes the process less efficient and therefore the correct answer to the question yes you guessed it correct it is it remains constant so in case of direct semiconductors the momentum of the electron remains constant during the transition from the valence band to the conduction band why are direct band gap semiconductors preferred for light emitting diodes the given options are a they have lower electrical conductivity leading to less energy loss as heat option b they require higher operating voltages resulting in brighter light emission option c they exhibit more efficient electron hole recombination due to momentum conservation enabling efficient light emission and option d they have larger band gaps making them more resistant to radiation damage facts which will take us to the correct answer are in direct band gap semiconductors electron hole recombination can occur directly leading to photon emission with the energy difference matching the band gap this process is efficient because momentum is conserved indirect band gap materials require phonons that is lattice vibrations to assist the recombination making it less efficient and requiring higher carrier densities for light emission option a b and d are not primary reasons for preferring direct band gap materials for leds and therefore the correct answer is option c they exhibit more efficient electron hole recombination due to momentum conservation enabling efficient light emission and therefore direct band gap semiconductor are preferred for light emitting diodes next question is in a direct band gap semiconductor out of the following statements which one holds true option a the minimum energy states in the conduction and valence bands occur at different crystal momenta k vectors option b an electron can directly absorb a photon and jump to the conduction band without changing its momentum option c photons cannot be emitted efficiently due to requirement of momentum conservation and option d none of the options given what we must know to answer this question correctly is in a direct band gap semiconductor the bottom of the conduction band and the top of the valence band have the same k vector this allows an electron to absorb a photon with the right energy and transition directly occur to the conduction band while conserving momentum leading to efficient light absorption and emission so if this is the case then option a and c are incorrect because they describe characteristics of indirect band gap semiconductors and thus we reach to the correct answer as option b an electron can directly absorb a photon and jump to the conduction band without changing its momentum next question which of the following is most likely a characteristic feature of indirect semiconductors compared to direct semiconductors the given options are option a high efficiency in light emission b lower thermal conductivity c short carrier lifetime option d long electron diffusion length 
प्लीज रिकॉल हियर लाइट इमिशन इज यूजली मोर इफिशियंट इन डायरेक्ट सेमी कंडक्टर ड्यू टू मोमेंटम कंजर्व ट्रांजिशन इन द केस ऑफ इनडायरेक्ट सेमी कंडक्टर्स फोनॉन्स असिस्ट लाइट इमिशन मेकिंग इट लेस इफिशियंट वाइल कैरियर लाइफ टाइम्स एंड डिफ्यूजन लेंथ कैन वेरी द मोस्ट कंसिस्टंट डिफरेंस इज थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी इन डायरेक्ट सेमी कंडक्टर्स माइट हैव लोअर थर्मल कंडक्टिविटी बिकॉज फोनॉन्स इन्वॉल्व इन लाइट इमिशन could scatter more hindering heat transfer this leads to the correct answer as option b that is lower thermal conductivity is a characteristic feature of indirect semiconductors as compared to direct semiconductors what is the function of anti reflective coating on the surface of a solar cell the given options are the anti reflective coatings are used to increase the light absorption they are used to decrease the light absorption they are used to enhance electrical resistance and option d they are used to minimize charge carrier generation what we must know to answer this question correctly is solar cells work by absorbing photons the energy in these photons excites electrons generating electricity unavoidably some light reflects off the surface of the solar cell this lost light means less energy available for conversion anti reflective coatings act like a trap for light it is designed to reduce reflection by minimizing interference between incoming light and reflected light waves this allows more light to enter the cell and be absorbed and therefore the correct answer of this question is the function of anti reflective coatings on the surface of a solar cell is to increase the light absorption next question is which characteristic of a material is generally more important for efficient light to electricity conversion in solar panels the given options are a direct band gap b indirect band gap c the color of the material and d the amount of electricity it can store points to consider here are direct semiconductors directly absorb light and efficiently kick electrons requiring less energy indirect materials need extra steps wasting energy and hindering conversion that's why materials like silicon and gallium arsenide with their direct band gaps dominate in efficient solar panels even though factors like color and storage play secondary roles thus the option that is correct of this the main characteristic of a material which is more important for efficient light to electricity conversion in solar panel is option a direct band gap next question in an indirect semiconductor what is the primary mechanism for electron transition from the valence band to the conduction band the given options are option a absorption of photons b thermal excitation c injection of charge carriers and d recombination of electron hole pairs facts which will take us to the correct answer are in indirect semiconductors the top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band don't have the same momentum k vector this mismatch prevents direct absorption of photons to excite electrons as photons carry no momentum thermal excitation in contrast uses heat to transfer energy to electrons providing them with enough energy to overcome the momentum barrier and reach the conduction band while less efficient than direct absorption thermal excitation remains the main mechanism for electron transition in indirect semiconductors and therefore the correct answer of this question is option b thermal excitation is the primary mechanism for electron transition from the valence band to the conduction band next question is what is the primary function of a solar cell and the given options are to generate electricity from sunlight to store energy in batteries option c to convert heat into electricity and option d to amplify electrical signals please recall here solar cells are designed to harness the energy from sunlight they are built with materials that absorb specific wavelengths of sunlight causing electrons to gain energy this creates an electrical current within the cell this current can be harnessed and used to power various devices or feed into the grid while solar cells can be involved in broader energy systems their primary function lies in directly converting sunlight into electricity setting them apart from the options like batteries that is storage 
thermal converters that is heat to electricity and amplifiers that is signal manipulation and therefore the correct answer of this question yes you guessed it correct to generate electricity from sunlight next question is what happens to the hall voltage if the direction of the magnetic field is reversed and the options given are it remains the same option b its polarity reverses option c its magnitude decreases and option d it becomes zero points to consider here are the magnetic field exerts a force that we know as lorentz force on the moving charged particles this deflects them in a direction perpendicular to both the field and the motion this deflection pushes positive charges to one side and negative charges to the other side creating a voltage difference that we know as hall voltage reversing the magnetic field direction switches the deflection direction pushing positive charges to the opposite side and vice versa consequently the voltage difference that we know as hall voltage flips its polarity to reflect the new charge distribution and therefore while the magnitude may or may not change depending on the specific setup the hall voltage reverses its polarity when the magnetic field direction is reversed and the correct answer is option b that hall voltage changes its polarity if the direction of magnetic field is reversed and the next question is in which direction does the hall voltage occur relative to the applied magnetic field and the current flow the given options are option a parallel to the magnetic field option b perpendicular to both the magnetic field and current flow option c perpendicular to the magnetic field and parallel to the current flow and option d parallel to both magnetic field and the current flow to answer this question correctly let us take an example assume water flowing out of the pipe is like the flow of electricity that is current in a conductor hold a ruler sideways next to the water coming out like the magnetic field the magnet will push the water a bit to the side that is bending of charges if you put walls around the area the water will hit them on the sides that is a charge build up this side pressure is like the hall voltage which forms at right angle to both the original water flow and the ruler and therefore the correct answer to this question is the direction of hall voltage is perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the current flow thank you for watching this video i hope this will help you in examination and preparing the topic semiconductors